be the king of our hearts, Lord, in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's give it up to the worship team. What a beautiful, beautiful set they did tonight. Thank you for leading us in worship and ushering us into the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So today you get me twice. Twice to be able to come and lead you in communion. And I, grant, I, I look at it as a, as a great honor to be here and to even be on, on, uh, upon this pulpit and just to be able to, to speak with you. Because there's been mighty men and women of God that's uh, graced this platform and I really don't do take it lightly. So while I wait for the communion elements to be distributed, I just want to see who was not here this morning. Can you just raise your hand real quick for me, please? One, two. Yeah, one, two. Okay, so it's not that many people that was not here this morning. So this morning, basically, I was just speaking about what the communion elements really was used for. And it was basically used as a, as a sign of covenant that was made between kings and high-ranking officials. But also it was used in the traditional uh, Jewish marriages or in the betrothal process as a sign of covenant between a man and a woman. Amen. If you did not know that, it is a, 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 a sign of your betrothal. And I also showed you where Lord Jesus said that he goes to prepare a place for us and when he's ready he's going to come back to take us where he is amen so that was part of the patrol process so uh tonight i just want to get back to the scripture itself and uh go to where the apostle paul was talking about communion and if i can ask uh, the, the media team just to bring up 1 corinthians 11 for me please 1 corinthians 11 and verse 23. And verse 23. But before I start reading, I was actually just, I, I just received a revelation while we were worshiping. And it's actually beautiful because there's so many things that the blood of Jesus did for us. And while I was, while I was worshiping, the Holy Spirit showed me that it's, it's, by, it's by his blood that we do not have to sin anymore. Yeah. Amen. It's by his blood that we do not have to sin any, uh, anymore. And I remember my BC days, my before Christ days, uh, Christ days, when I was still living for the world, very much hedonistic, very much trapped in sin. I could not stop sinning. I couldn't stop sinning. If there's any one of you, if you're trapped in sin, you really need to come to the cross. You really need to push in and come into the forgiveness and uh, into, into, the, uh, into what Lord Jesus provided for you so that he can break that power that it has over you because you do not have to sin. In my BC days, I didn't have a choice. I, I couldn't stop sinning. And I don't know if that's you or whoever it is that's here, but I couldn't stop sinning. Now I don't have to sin. Now I have a choice. And in 1 John it says, He who is born from above does not sin. Amen? We can go to the scripture verse, but it's, un it's unnecessary. Um, it's, it's just the revelation that I had, basically that I had to share with you. So take it as it comes. Um, okay, so verse 23 of 1 Corinthians 11. Can I have the King James, please? Well, actually, it's not the book of James. It's, it's the book of Jacob, King Jacob. Okay, there we go. For I have received... Oh, can, can we all stand, please, for the reading of the word? And if I can ask that each and every one of us read together. Okay, so let's go. One, two, three. For I have received of the Lord... That which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he betrayed, was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given him thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And the same manner, after, also he took the cup, when he stopped saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. 
This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Thank you, that's enough. So, uh, just a couple of things I want to highlight for you there. It says, uh, we have to, before we partake of the communion, we have to examine ourselves. Amen? And we examine ourselves by asking the Lord what we need to repent of. So, you go in your heart, and you, you, uh, you just ask your Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, show me, please. What I need to repent of right now, what I need to repent of, if there's someone I need to forgive, if there's some sin that I have in my life, I don't want to be guilty of the body and the blood. I want to be able to be free when I partake of this, and I ask you to reveal it to me now. So take that 30 seconds, ask the Lord to reveal it to you, speak in your heart, speak in your mind, and then ask him for forgiveness, or forgive anyone who has trespassed against you. And then secondly, we need to recognize what Lord Jesus gave his body for. Because he says that, um, can, I, can I go back to uh, 29 and 30, please? Verse 29. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. In the next verse. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. It means that a lot of people have sicknesses, and a lot of people have dry, died prematurely because they did not honor the Lord's body for what he gave it for. Okay, It's not to take the bread and dip it into the cup of wine and then to eat it. That's not what it's for. He gave his body to be broken and his back to be bruised and for our healing and for our deliverance. Because the Lord's sacrifice was twofold. The first part of his sacrifice was at the whipping post. And the second part of his sacrifice was to give his life at the cross. Amen? So it's the body and the blood. The body for the whipping post and to be broken and the blood for the forgiveness of sin. Amen? So this is what he gave his body for. So you need to know that. According to Isaiah 53, um, he was bruised and battered for our iniquities. Amen? Amen. So let's do this. Um, I don't have any elements with me. Can I grab someone's or whoever have anything? Thank you, sir. So let's take the, the body. Lord, we break this bread in remembrance of your broken body. I thank you, Lord, that we can discern and recognize what you gave your body for. And I thank you, Lord, that you gave your body to be broken and your back to be bruised for our healing and for our deliverance. Lord, we thank you for making it possible for us to live this life in divine health, free from any sickness and disease. Thank you, Lord, for making it possible for us to live it. Um, to live this life free from any demonic oppression, torments, and afflictions. Lord Jesus, at the whipping post, you were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquities. You took the chastisement of our peace upon yourselves. And with your stripes, with your bruise, with your wound, 
we are healed and we are delivered. We have been set free and we decree and receive it now by faith. In Jesus' name, you may partake. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let me take the cup. Lord Jesus, you are the land that was slain before the foundation of the world. Thank you, Lord, for the shedding of your precious blood. Lord, thank you that by your blood our sins was not only forgiven, but it was remitted. It was removed as far as the east is from the west, and our Heavenly Father will no longer remember it. Lord, thank you for justifying us by faith. And that we have peace again with our Heavenly Father because of the shedding of your blood. Lord, thank you that through the blood of the everlasting covenant, you are making us perfect in every good work to do the will of our Heavenly Father, the God of peace, working in us which is well-pleasing in His sight. And we thank you, Lord, for redeeming us from the power of Satan and darkness. Lord, thank you for redeeming us from the curse of the law. Thank you, Lord, for redeeming us over the, uh, from the power of sin. And we thank you, Lord, that we can boldly enter into the holies of holies because of a new and living way that you consecrated for us. And we thank you, Lord, for the power that we receive when we partake of your blood. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you very much, Miss Cynthia. She's going to... Do you want uh, announcements for us again? Hallelujah. Praise God, somebody. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, God, for your sweet Holy Spirit, God, that's resting in this place on tonight, God. Oh, God, we have come to lift up the name of Jesus, Lord, the name that is above every name, God, the name that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess, oh, God. We thank you, O oh God, that sickness and poverty has to bow on tonight, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let heaven come down into this place, O oh God. Adonai, be seated amongst us, God. We reverence and we honor you, O oh God. As the word of God goes forth on today, O oh God, bring us out of darkness, God, and into your marvelous light, God. And God, we will exalt your name and we'll give you praise, O oh God. Make us be, to be vessels fit for the kingdom of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Lord God, we praise you. Amen, somebody. Welcome to Global Fellowship Church. Amen. Praise goes right there. Amen. As you are already seated, go ahead and greet your neighbor. Let know you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord. Amen. We could be any place else, but this is a safe place. This is a place of power and deliverance, and so we praise the Lord. Amen. My name is Lady Sylvia, and these are your announcements for 5 o'clock p.m. Sunday, September the 3rd, 2023. We want to welcome our Global Fellowship family, and for those who are also watching online, we are so very glad that you joined us. Come with a spirit of expectation for what the Lord will do and say unto you on tonight. Amen. It's personal. Take every single service personal as unto the Lord and, and, and believe God for transformation in your own life, in your own home, for your own family, for your own children. Amen. Are there any first time visitors in the house today? Amen. Anybody? Anybody? All right. That's okay. Amen. Um, we just want to thank you all for being here this morning. It was extremely powerful and enlightening and revelatory. And so, uh, you know, every uh, service gets higher and higher. So I love the evening services. Amen. Amen. Um, we have three services, 10 a.m. on Sunday, 5 o'clock p.m. every Sunday, and every Wednesday we have a recharge service. Every last Friday of the month is Miracle uh, Friday. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, so don't just come invite a friend. Invite somebody who needs to get set free, who needs to renew their covenant with the Lord, who needs, who's looking for a church where they can not only just get good worship, good praise, we get good teaching, we get training, we get it all here. Amen. So invite somebody. Just don't be selfish. Amen. The church hosted a new family's dinner on yesterday. It was amazing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. About 20 people came out. 
If you are new to the church and have not received an invite, please speak to Dr. Lungi or Pastor Sam after the service so that you can attend the next dinner. Amen. That's extremely important. We want to connect with you. Our leadership showed up and got to know our new members. And so if you are new or if you know someone that you invited who's been coming and they're new, please let them know uh, that we, we have this going for them. Um, prophetic encounters. These are Facebook lives hosted by our own Dr. Joseph. This will start Tuesday, September the 5th at 7 o'clock p.m. Praise. Hallelujah. I remember you were doing those, and they were very good. And so I would, I would tune into those when I got off of work. They were really good. He will be dealing with different kinds of topics. Please make sure you are following our Facebook page our Instagram page, and our YouTube page. So if you have your phone out now, go ahead and like and share and follow the page. If you do have your phone out, the broadcast is live. You can go ahead and, and share it to your page right now so some, maybe someone who's not here can watch the service and partake of the blessing and the word that will go forth on tonight. So we're expecting great things and great understanding from what will be coming on starting September the 5th at 7 o'clock p.m. School of the Spirit 2.0 and 1.0. For those that missed the first class, beginning of the year, coming up soon, both classes will run concurrently. The classes will begin on Saturday, September the 23rd through Saturday, November the 11th. Registration is now officially open. Take out your phone and please follow the QR code that is on the screen. For more information, once again, speak to Dr. Lungi or Pastor Sam for more information. Amen. Amen. We have the QR code there. If you want to take out your phone now, go ahead and scan it, and it will redirect you to a form that we can provide more information and also get more information. Amen. Amen. If everyone would go ahead and stand to your feet at this time. Praise the Lord. Come on, stand back up. Yes. We want to go ahead and welcome the father of this house, our very own Dr. Joseph Munya. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you today for this moment. We thank you for the prophetic release that we are doing today. We are shifting. We are rising. We ask you to raise the standard in our lives and in all the areas of your life, all of our lives. We declare today, let there be such a heavy anointing over this house to heal, to break the yoke, break the bondage, that every chains be destroyed. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we break any satanic activity over our lives and over our finances. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare that our careers are taking off. We declare increase in our lives. We command every business that is represented in this house. We speak life over it now by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare now that every thief that has been sent in our lives to steal the finances, that we stop them now by the power of the Holy Ghost. We declare now, 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 release everything that has been stolen by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. We declare now that not one person will go home broke. Not one person will go home still in need. We declare that every financial need shall be met today and for the rest of our lives in Jesus' name. Put your hands together and just give the Lord a big hand of praise and you may be seated in the name of Jesus. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and sing, Lord, I worship you. Because, because of who you are, Lord, I worship you. Because of who you are. If you know the song from the top. Because, because of who you are, I give you glory. 
that's what you're going to be singing on the way to the bank. Because of who you are, I give you praise. On the way to the altar to say, I do. Because, because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Lord, I will. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. If you know the song, Jehovah, Jehovah, my provider. For someone to release that burden out of your heart because Jehovah Jireh the mighty provider is in the house C can we take just two minutes and release that that accommodation burden out of your heart that marital burden out of your heart that career burden out of your heart that educational burden out of your heart can you release it out of your heart because Jehovah is about to be Jireh in your life Release it out of you today. And I declare before the end of the service, you will testify to the glory of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for leading us into all truth. Thank you for revealing Jesus to us. Thank you for showing us that Lord God is our Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide himself the lamb for sacrifice. You hold my hand Every moment, come on, lift your hands. Come, my raging sea, you walk with me through fire, and heal all my disease. I trust, I trust. In you, because I, I trust, trust in you. I believe, I believe you're my healer. I
Psalm 81, from verse number 10. Psalm 81, from verse number 10, please. The book of Psalm, chapter 81, verse number 10. Something has been stirred up, if you can remain standing. Something has been stirred up in this place. And I heard the Lord say, I have discharged the angels to meet you at a point of your need. The angels are coming. They have been released to meet you at the point of your need, your healing, your deliverance, your restoration, your provision. And I hear the Lord saying accommodation. I don't know why I'm hearing accommodation, but the Lord has released accommodation for somebody today. I'm hearing the Lord saying even marriage has been released. Someone today, let me say this. Exactly 14 months. I see the wedding taking place in 14 months. Between now and the next 14 months, you meet someone, you get engaged, you get married, and you move into a new house. 14 months. Something is happening today. Something is happening today. Thank you, Holy Spirit. If you are spiritual, you know when the, when the atmosphere has been stirred up. You know the atmosphere has been stirred up. Psalm 81, verse number 10. I want you to declare this by faith because this is what the Lord is saying to you today. Are you ready for this? This is going to be every believer who believes. Every believer that believes. I'm not talking about those of you that are here. I don't know. I just decided. This is those of you that know God brought you here for something. Are you ready? As loud as you can. Go.
One more time, I want us to read the last part. Open thy mouth as loud as you can. And once you declare that, I want you to open your mouth and give God a shout of praise for the victory that he has given you tonight. Are you ready? All right, one, two, three, go. Just how great he is. How great he is, he's still moving, he's still moving, just how great he is, how great he is, he's still moving, he's still moving, just how Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything? Nothing, nothing is too hard for my God. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too hard? says I'm the one I'm the one that brought you out of the land of Egypt I don't know what Egypt God brought you out of there, there are some of you you could have died in Egypt where Pharaoh had a foot on your neck they were choking you there was some form of witchcraft disease that was holding you bound but it was God who came down from heaven and tell that Pharaoh to let you go there are some of your friends some of your siblings your family members are still in Egypt but God brought you out of it two people I came out of it alive come on I came out of it alive the, the devil thought you were going to die in Egypt but God had a plan for you there wasn't a grave deep enough to hold you in Egypt you didn't hear me there was not a grave deep enough wide enough to fit your body in Egypt I came to declare today that there isn't a grave that is ready to receive you this year. How great he is. If you know it was the Lord that brought you out, then you can always live a life, a life of thanksgiving that every day you wake up you understand that I did not wake up because I can wake up but there is a God who wakes me up there, there are some of you doctors never believed you could live to the age of 20 to the age of 20 or the age of 40 or 50 but God brought you out of Egypt tell somebody he brought me out Now listen, here's what makes God, God. God could never come to Egypt to bring you out unless there was a promised land wait, waiting for you. If your neighbor is not clapping, they don't understand it. Can I say that one more time? God will never bring you out of something unless there's something else waiting for you. Can I go deeper? While Egypt was building houses for the Egyptian, there was the Canaanites building houses for the Israelites. 
I, I don't know if you understand that. So you've been busy stocking up the shelves at Walmart. Somebody else is making recipes for your restaurant. You, you, you. <laughs> someone else while you are busy driving uber for uber somebody else is building your own company so when the lord shows up and he finally says come out of egypt you don't come out with an attitude you come out with thanksgiving and praise because you are not going to be homeless but you are going to occupy the land Now, here's the key. Go back to the scripture. Here's the key. He says, so when you come out, don't you ever shut your mouth. Come on, tell your neighbor, don't you ever shut up. Because your voice is a weapon. I know the preacher told you that, but he never went into details to tell you that a shut mouth is a defeated mouth. When you shut up, you are defeated. And that's what the devil wants you to do. The devil wants you to shut up. But I came to tell you, open your mouth and God will fill it with good things. Bring up the scripture, please. Watch this. Look at the scripture. God says, open thy mouth wide. Meaning that if you open it very small, your car can't fit in it. Oh, you don't, you, you don't know that your mouth produces cars? Some of you open the mouth enough for the spoon. I want to open until a car comes out of it. Let me try somebody over there. I want to open my mouth wide enough until my four-bedroom house can come out of it. I want to shout. I want to declare. Now watch this. In case you still don't understand. God says, and I will fill it. Come on. NLT. NLT. It's not just filling it. I don't just want my mouth to be filled in with chicken. I'm tired of chicken. I'm tired of chicken. God will fill your mouth with what? God will fill your mouth with what? God will fill your mouth with what? So there are things that are going to fit in your mouth. There are things. So this session of the service, we are calling it prophetic declaration. The Lord spoke to me that today, some of you are going to foretell, prophesy your own future. God says there are some of you who are going to put a date when you move into your new house. I'm sorry, wrong person. Let me try somebody over there. Some of you must put a date on your own wedding. Still not. I think this word is for Gideon. Some of you tell the date when you become a multi-million... That's the reason I cannot be part of a church that's very silent. Because if you don't open your mouth, God will never fill it up with good things. Today, the greatest breakthrough that you've been waiting for, God says, I'm going to force it down your mouth. I want to take 30 seconds. As many things as you can declare in 30 seconds. Are you ready? As many things as you can declare in 30 seconds. I want you to move from 2023 into 2024, into 2029, into 2040, and just prophesy what God is releasing in your life. Go! I'm not hearing a prophetess speaking. I'm not hearing somebody prophesying in their life. He said, open your mouth wide. The power of life and death is in your tongue. Speak it until the witches know you have declared. Speak it until the haters can tell. The 
nothing they can say that can ever shut you down because the Lord will answer the many voices of the righteous. Listen to what the Lord spoke to me. The Lord says some things are not coming into your life until you declare them by faith and speak them into existence. God says they already departed from the hand of God. Those things are suspended into the realm of the spirit waiting for someone to speak them into your life by faith. Remember the Bible says he calls things that are not as though they were. Come on, tell your neighbor, I am healed. So when you declare, I am healed, healing was just established. But do you know when healing was released? 2,000 years ago. But it will not enter your body until your mouth releases it through declaration. One more time, if you, if you believe God, shout, I am healed. You know what that means? That means as of today, whatever was in your blood, whether it was a virus, whether it was a bacteria, or whether it was a cell that the devil had manipulated that was causing pain in your bones and your flesh and your muscles, God has released you from all of that because you declared it. You called it what it's not as if it was. And then the Lord says, I've already sent deliverance. Amen. But I have been waiting for you to declare yourself free. Because the Bible says, and whomsoever the Son of God shall set free, is free indeed. Come on, look at three people and say, I am free. All the areas of my life. Come on, you are declaring, you are declaring. So remember, this is not going to be a regular service where we do a regular sermon. This is going to be nothing but declarations. I just heard the Holy Spirit say, I am releasing your children. If you are a parent, I want you to receive. Your children have been released from the generational curses. Come on, the, the, the Lord says, I will never let them be captives of drugs and captives of impurities and captive of lustful spirit God says I will never let them go into prison I won't let them get pregnant I get pregnant in wedlock God says I will never let them be homeless God says I release your children somebody shout amen second Kings chapter 4 from verse 1 to verse 7 remember this is not a regular service we came to make declaration you know, when Jesus died, they put the words on the cross, King of King, King of the Jews. And then, they, and then was, was that Herod who got, uh, um, uh, who got so mad that they put King of Kings and they went to protest. He said, what I have written shall stand. Yeah. He was not a Christian and what he wrote stood. How much more you Christians? You have been given the abilities like Yahweh where God would say, let there be light and light was. You see, the devil doesn't want you to get to the place where you realize that in your mouth you have the power known as the power of creation. You, you didn't catch it. Let me try it over there. Do you know you can create your own marriage? By simply saying, I'm tired of being somebody's girlfriend. I declare as of today, I'm going to be somebody's wife. And your life begins... I, I didn't see a lot of amens. You are so comfortable being somebody's girlfriend. I'm declaring to somebody who has the faith. Speak it and call it and declare it now. Do you know, do you know, do you know you can discharge yourself from prescription medication? I'm sick and tired of being on this medication. I declare as of today 
that every atom in my body listen to my voice. You will never depend on this medication. After today, you are discharged. Watch. Your brain begins to change based on your declaration. I've heard stories of people who are given sugar by medical doctors. Literally sugar. Sugar. And the person say, I feel better. Sugar. The same sugar they had in the house. The difference is it was given by the doctor. So the, the brain believed that the medication the doctor gave me will make me feel better when it was sugar. It's their faith. Can I talk to five people today? Who are ready to declare things that have never been understood by humans over your life? Are you ready to speak miracles that have never been recorded before? After all, Jesus says, greater things shall you do. Are you ready to speak stuff over your life? Come on, I want you for the next 30 seconds, declare the next 40 years of your life. 40 years of your life. Come on, speak it in the name of Jesus. Second Kings, Second Kings, Second Kings. Oh, the, the Lord just the Lord just told me, get ready to see this place filled up with hungry people. No, that was not a suggestion, that was a declaration. Second Kings chapter four and this one. Some of you can sit down, some of you can stand, depending on where your spirit is, but if this place is where too charged up. 2 Kings chapter 4 and verse 1. And now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha. This woman was not married to a regular man. She was married to a prophet. I want to declare that you are not going to marry a regular guy. Because when you marry a regular guy, a regular girl, you have a regular marriage. We are done. We are sick and tired of regular people, marrying regular people. I declare the next time you say I do, whether they were born prophets or not, because they're going to be marrying you, God is going to turn them into a prophet. <laughs> we didn't come to have a regular service. The, the reason is every time you show up, if you are a dude, you come home feeling all beat up. She looks at you, she says, come on honey, wipe that look off of your face. The Lord spoke to me as you were coming into the house that the million dollar check is coming. I declare, you are not marrying a regular girl. You are not marrying a regular dude. The prophetic anointing is coming. Because remember, the Bible declares in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, your sons and daughters. The prophetic is not a title for the, for the special clique. It's for everyone that believe. Come on, raise your right hand as I receive the prophetic anointing. I want to prophesy that some of you will prophesy money in your account while you are standing in the line on your way to the tailor. Before you get to the front of the line, money has just appeared in your account. This is not for everybody, but it's for those of you that believe that God has released a prophetic anointing. That some of you are going to prophesy to the leasing office as you are giving them the check for this month. You tell them at the end of the list, I won't be renewing because I'm buying my own house. That the prophetic unction kicked in. You guys are too quiet. I'm sorry. This is not for you. This is not for you. Hey. 
she cried out. She said, my husband served you. My, my husband who served you is dead. Watch this. I'm declaring as a prophet that you are not going to be left as a young widow. Amen. No, you are not burying your wife. You're not burying your husband young. You will all live a full age. <laughs> I'm declaring no funerals in your house. You are not burying your children. You are not burying your spouse. Sakadebo Shandaka. Hallelujah. Watch this. Watch this. And you know he feared the Lord. But now a debtor has come threatening to take my two sons. The Lord was telling me, son, you can't serve me and live in debt. You didn't hear me. Let me try over there. The Lord says, son, you cannot serve me. Be a prophet. Walk in a prophetic anointing and live in debt. Can I stand on this anointing and declare a debt-free life? You, you didn't you, this is This is for those of you that understand God has put a prophetic mantle over your life. I declare you today, debt-free life. I said debt-free life. Medical bills canceled. Student loans canceled. House loan canceled. Loan car canceled. Why? You cannot save God and be in debt. If you don't believe me, that's okay. You and your unbelief, you watch us rise out of debt. The Lord says to me, I'm raising a new generation of prophets that will never know what poverty is. Again, remember, for the, for the sake of those of you that are not yet in the spirit, prophets are not who preach in the, on, on the pulpit, but prophets are those, they could be housewives. Amen. They, they could be husbands who are working at the construction sites, but they are prophets knocking down the walls, building down the walls, but they stand over there and they declare, I have another contract coming in my life. I have a $200,000 job coming next week. I have another opening coming up. These are the prophets that God is raising. So God says, you will not serve him. Be in debt and live a life of poverty. Come on, tell three people, not my portion. Come on, disconnect yourself from it. Not my portion, not my portion, not my portion, not my portion. Those of you that are watching, type it over there and poverty is not my portion. Debt is not my portion. Poverty is not my portion. Debt is not my portion. I declare increase. I declare abundance. I declare overflow. In the name of Jesus. Verse 2, please. The devil has no idea what God is raising in this church. God is raising housewives who are going to be more rich than those women who work. God is raising powerful men in this house. We are not making money from rap music, but we are making money from stock. Oh, I was hoping Gideon would catch that. No, because they, they think only, they think black men can only make money when we become rappers or become NBA players. There are some of us, that's not in our DNA, but we have the ability to comprehend the things of the Sandaba And the next time the devil wants you to feel like just because you don't look like her, then you can't get married. The devil is a liar. 
God is raising women here who are going to be married without losing a pound, getting a pound. You don't have to get an extra wig, long nails. The way you are, the prophetic anointing comes upon you, touches the brother's heart. The brother can't sleep over you because there's a prophetic anointing. I think I'm talking to the wrong people tonight. This should have been a 7, 10 a.m. service. Some of you look too tired. You are too much enchilada this afternoon. <laughs> Watch this now. What can I do to help you? Elisha asked. Tell me, what do you have in your house? Tell your neighbor, when you have nothing, you still have something. Because the woman was not prophetic, she thought she was broke. Without knowing that the biggest financial miracle in her life was already in her house. Amen. Some of you are sitting there thinking, how am I going to pay my bills? There's already a miracle in your life. It's already there. The reason you don't know it is because you're not looking with a prophetic sight. You don't understand with a prophetic mind. But I declare today that while we are under this anointing, God will open up your understanding and know that the greatest miracle for your finances is already in your house. And this woman says nothing except a flask of olive oil, very tiny, she replied. Keep going, please. And Elisha says, Boro has many empty jars. He was very specific. He wanted empty jars so you don't have to retain them full. Amen. He says empty. The reason is because there are some people that are dangerous in your life. When they see you all of a sudden doing well, they will say, I'm the one who borrowed you. So God says, I don't want any man to take any glory because of what I'm about to do in your life. So the next time you borrow something, make sure it's empty. Amen. I don't know whose word that is. But God sent me to tell you today, God is not going to allow any man or woman to share the glory in your life. What God is about to do in your life, no one can ever say if it had not been for me. No, the devil is a liar. I came to you. I asked you. You told me you had nothing to give me. But you gave me nothing but an empty jar. That's the reason sometimes every time somebody refers you to a job, they don't hire you. Because if they hire you at the place your friend referred you, then then, girl, had it not been for me, shush, you and that lousy job. Tell your neighbor, take only empty jars. So when it's time for me to return it, your empty jars are at my mercy whether to put half in there or to return to them to you empty. Because if you give me jars that are halfway, now I'm obligated. You guys are way too quiet. Verse 4, please. I, I, do, are you getting the message the Lord is giving you? I'm telling you. The, the, there's a remnant that God is raising out of this place. The devil will be like, how on earth did you get here? How did you make it this far? That it doesn't make sense, but all it is is a miracle. Amen. Because you don't look like you should live in that house. You don't look like you should drive that car. You don't look like you should have that kind of money in your house. You don't look like you should be married to him or her. You don't look like your kids should be in that school. You don't look like that company should be your company. But guess what? It is mine. Several years ago, I was invited to go to Virginia, and then I had given a prophecy in this one of the biggest churches that I've been to. I had given a prophecy about the owner of the business, and the pastor organized the meeting. And before we went to the meeting, he said, I, I got to warn you, this woman we are meeting, she's very rich. And I'm thinking she's rich, black rich. I didn't know she was rich, rich. <laughs> and so we are seated over there, and I hear this woman talking very Oakleaf talk. Because, you know, the way Oakley, the way we talk, you know, I lived off of Keist and 35. I know how we talk. 
we were sitting and she showed up and uh, and I'm sitting there she's looking at me she goes honey let me tell you I didn't finish even my seventh grade She says, I didn't. She said, do you know how I got here? I said, I, I tithed my way here. Wow, come on. She said, I tithed my way here. And then her phone rings. And she goes, okay, okay, okay. Honey, hire both of them. And I'm thinking, what? She says, I'm supposed to hire like CFO or something like that. Two Harvard guys applied and both of them are very good and they qualify. And the guy who was hiring, he says, I'm stuck. I don't know who to hire. She said, honey, hire both of them. I don't care if the other one is going to get me coffee, but hire both of them. And then she looks at me and she goes, can you imagine Tyra Perry wanted me to buy his used plane? Who does he think I am? And now I'm looking at her. This is a, I don't know. I'm wondering how did she come here? Because she doesn't talk like she should be here. She doesn't behave like she should be here. But that's what God is doing. God is not looking for people who look like it, talk like it, walk like it. He's looking for the most unlikely people. And I hear him say, I found them in this house. This is not for everybody. But those of you that have been saying, God, why am I different? That's the reason you've been different. So when he finally blesses you, everybody will be like, how on earth? What's your secret? And you tell them the secret is the B-I-B-L-E. <laughs> Watch this. Then go into your house. Go into your what? Specific, go into your house. That And this is the problem I have with many of you who don't have a spiritual house where you commit, where you submit. Go to your house. Go to your house. Go to your house. Very specific. Your house. Because there's something that happens when you are in your house. I knew I was going to lose some of you when I said that. And your sons. Your house. And shut the door behind you, your house. And pour olive oil from your flask into the empty jars, setting each one aside when it is filled. The prophet knows the flask is small. If we were to fill up the jars from the flask, it would take maybe a thousand trips. Yeah. Come on. Come on. But he says, using one flask, Begin to pour, and each jar will be filled. Prophetic instruction. The Lord spoke to me. There are many of you who have prophetic instruction on your tongue. Come on. <laughs> Come on. You have, pro tell your neighbor, I have prophetic instruction on my tongue. You know what that means? What that means is you can tell your bones what they can and cannot be. And your bones have no choice but to be only what you say. You, you, didn't, you didn't catch it. You didn't catch it. Prophetic instruction. You can tell your business what to bring in and what not to bring in. Instructions. I'm helping those of you that are in business. You can declare for your career what comes in and what cannot. You give your career instruction. Are you ready to release prophetic instruction? The next 30 seconds, I want you to release prophetic instructions in your life. Go. I'm not hearing prophetic instructions. Come on, as loud as you can. Release prophetic instructions. Amen. She did as she was told. Her sons kept bringing jars to her and she filled one after another. I want to declare that every dream will be filled one after 
another. There will not be any dream that shall be left empty. There isn't a desire in your heart that shall be left empty. I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that as long as that jar is in your life, it shall never be empty. I don't know who has to hear this, but God is saying some of you are the jar to travel the nations. God says it will never be empty. And when you travel, you will not travel on spirit airline. Adaka Sedeke Mosha. You will not travel on Delta. You will not travel on America. Some of us are going to travel on what is called a banana peel. It is a jet. I declare that the jar for a house shall never be empty. I declare the jar for marriage shall never be empty. I declare a jar to live a long life shall never be empty. Somebody shout, be filled. I'm commanding every jar in my life to be filled. I'm commanding every passion in my life to be filled. I'm commanding every desire in my life to be filled. As long as it's in my heart, Psalm 37 verse 4, Delight thyself in the Lord and he shall grant you the desires of your heart. I don't know who needed to be here, but God is saying, I'm about to fill your life. No more empty jars in your life. No more empty wishes in your life. No more empty desires in your life. God will fill everything with good things. Somebody shout amen. Verse 6. Are you glad you came? Let's shame the devil that we came. Soon every container was full to the brim. The word brim is a British word to the lips. There are some of you who look at the car, at least it's up empty. No, we are not talking about semantics. We are talking about literally to the brim. All the way, if we put one more drop, it will start running over. God says because of the hell you have been through. I am not leaving any space in case the devil want to put something else on top. God says when the jar is all the way in, there isn't any room for anything else. Can I declare that the devil cannot fill you with nothing because your jars will be full. Bring me another jar, she said to one of the sons. There ain't any more, he told her. And then the olive oil stopped flowing. Watch this. As long as, this is the anointing God is released on you. As long as there's an empty jar in your life, the anointing will not stop. It is illegal for the anointing to stop. If there is an empty jar, God has commanded the anointing to never stop until every jar. I hear the Holy Ghost saying the anointing for finances will not stop until some of you are certified millionaire. Wrong people, I'm sorry. Zeus is saying go up until you are worth one billion. The anointing will not stop until she says I do. The anointing will not stop until your children come to the Lord. The anointing will not stop until the house is yours. This is, I, I, I'm preaching to myself. The rest of you are just hearing what the Lord is telling me. Come on, tell your neighbor the anointing will not stop. When you are sleeping, the anointing is flowing. When you are praying, the anointing is flowing. When you are at work, the anointing is flowing. God has commanded the anointing, never stop until a man's life is full. I came to declare full jars.
Verse 7. Everybody read verse 7 together. Go. A few hours before the woman was about to lose her children. A few hours later, the woman has an oil company. She's competing with BP and Shell and Toro and 7-Eleven. Can I declare tonight that God is releasing oil in your life? I, I don't know who needs to hear this. But God is releasing a kind of oil that is going to bring you to the level of complete freedom from the life of lack, the life of torment, the life of death, the life of affliction. There's an anointing bringing oil in your life. Woo! This woman is now competing with 100-year-old oil companies. This woman has no experience on running oil companies. But because she came under the anointing, the oil on her life is flowing. She had just as much oil to compete with large companies. Cut the track. I need, I need an actual piano, please. Tell your neighbor, I'm walking into something big. Did, did you actually realize that the woman starts an oil company? Yes. You, you guys are way too quiet. The woman starts an oil company with zero experience. Zero experience. Because she followed the instructions of the Lord. The Bible says her debt was paid off. And for the rest of her life, I'm sure this woman was now traveling all over the world. She could go to Zimbabwe and live in a five-star hotel. She could go to Hawaii. Why? Because she encountered a prophetic anointing. I declare now over you that every date that you have, I declare over you that every area you are lacking, that God has released an anointing that will not stop until every one of your jars are filled in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout a better amen. <laughs> Exodus chapter 3 verse 21. Exodus chapter 3 verse 21. Tell your neighbor de de prophetic declarations are my kind of things. I don't know if that makes some good grammar or not, but I'm declaring that God is going to make you fall in love with declaring things. Until people start thinking something is wrong. Why are you always saying I'm de I declare I'm healed. I declare I'm strong. I declare I'm healthy. I declare I'm wealthy. I declare I'm employed. I declare my business is growing. I declare an international global ministry. Everybody read that scripture as loud as you can go. I want us to change that to the King James Version because when we say favorably, it, it looks like they have, a, they have a decision in it. But, but no, they, they, they don't have to. They don't have a choice. They don't have to decide whether they like you or not. There is a God who goes against their will, turns their own heart that was turned against you. According to Proverbs 21 verse 1, the heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord. And he turns it. Tonight I am declaring by favor of God that God is turning the hearts of men and women that have refused to let you walk into those high places that their hearts will open for you. You guys are not ready for this today. 
any man that ever looked at the application with your name on it and then all of a sudden they just did not like what they saw. God says, I'm opening up their heart. Let's read the King James Version. Go. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. Are you ready? God says for the 400 years that you labored without pay in Egypt. God says when the time comes, I'm not letting you go empty handed. I don't know who needs to hear this. God says for all those nights you stayed up and you prayed, you were seeking the Lord, you were believing God when there was no promise of a job, no one was promising you of marriage, no one was promising you of babies, no one was promising you they'll pay your rent, but you believed God day and night, crying to the Lord. God says you will not walk out empty handed. The Lord says, for every pain that was ever subjected into your life, God says, I will compensate you. For every tear that ever came out of your eye, God says, I will compensate you. For every lie that was told on you, God says, I will compensate you. For every frustration that you've ever gone, to, gone through, God says, I will compensate you. This is the reason, this is the reason those of us that are in the Lord, when we cry, we don't cry like those people that are in the world. We don't cry so hopeless because we know that at the end of the day, he will turn our weeping into dancing. He will wipe the tears from our eyes. He will declare over us. Kabo sayada mandike. Oh, God says you are not coming out empty handed. God says he knows how they treated you when you lived in their house. I will pay you for that. God says I know how they treated you when they gave you a ride in their car. God says I will pay you for that. God says I know how they treated you. Whenever you were asking for help from them, God said I will pay you. God says I know that some people treat their dogs better than they treated you when you worked for them. Oh, you guys are way too quiet. They, they subjected you to humiliation because they knew you could not quit. Because you needed that paycheck. God says, I will not let you walk out of that place empty-handed. Am I talking to somebody today? Look at verse 22, and then we're going to pray and go home. Everybody read verse 22, go. Change the version to the NLT, please. I don't like the word borrow. Because borrow means, can I borrow some sugar? Are you going to bring my sugar back? Uh, we, we know we're going to put it in the tea and drink it, but why do we say, can I borrow some sugar? I don't like that word. I like the word ask. Now, if you know how Egypt was beat up, you understand Egypt would not be in a position to refuse when they ask. The roles have been turned the Egyptians are no longer causing terror to the Jewish people. But the Jewish people are now the ones terrorizing the Egyptians. You, you, didn't, you didn't catch it. If you look at every plague Egypt went through, the Jewish people are the ones now who have, in the modern era we could call them terrorists. They are now terrorizing the Egyptians. They turn around, their firstborn babies are dead. They turn around, there's darkness. They turn around, there's fleas. They, they are terrified. 
at the very appearance of them. So imagine a person you are terrified of come to you and say, can I get a hundred dollars? Are you going to say no? You see, this is the state of a Christian that God is expecting us when we confront the devil. When we confront the devil as a beat up church, the devil will not release what he stole from us. But God empowers us until the devil is terrified at your sight. So when you show up and you say, devil, whatever you took from my daddy, whatever you took from my mommy, the devil is terrified. He wants to let you go. So he will give it to you. I took this from your neighbors. You take it. I took this from your cousins. You take it. You, 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 didn't, you didn't catch it. You didn't catch it. Did, did you catch that? Tell your neighbor, God is making me a terror to the kingdom of darkness. Your very appearance, when you walk into certain buildings, demons begin to tremble. I, I don't know if you're hearing me. Witches, they start having high blood pressure. They don't know where it came from. You just walked in and everybody's high blood pressure start going up. Because the anointing on your life makes you a terror to them. And then he says, ask the articles of silver and gold and fine clothing. You know why? Because God knows when you get out of that place, he doesn't want you to look like a slave. <laughs> this, this word is way too deep. God doesn't want you to look like what you have been your whole life. So when you are coming out of there, he wants you to look like you are loaded. Because the land you are going to go in should not know you used to be a slave. So when you show up, you are looking like the masters. This is really deep. But look at the last part. <laughs> and he says, and you will strip the Egyptians of their wealth. Amani and I were coming from Congo last week. And when we get to the airport, they start stripping you. What is that in your pocket? Take it out. That is what is called stripping. They take out, by force, take out the stuff that is on you. So you don't understand when God says, you are going to strip Egypt of its wealth. That you are going to look at the house and say, what is that? That's mine. <laughs> what is that in there? Money, that's mine. You know why? Because God says the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. Do you understand that? And the devil wants you broke all the days of your life. When there's wealth in the hands of the Egyptians, that's waiting to be stripped by those who are righteous. The King James Version says, and you shall spoil. But I like stripping because you take it by force from a place of authority. Because if I don't comply with the TSA, I ain't going on the plane and I could end up in prison. Amen. Place of authority. Spoil, I can argue and make a U-turn. The TSA, they don't like you, you go to jail because they just don't like you. you. It's a place of authority. Raise your right hand and say, Lord Jesus, I receive my, my authority through the name Jesus over the kingdom of darkness over the nation of Egypt in Jesus name Amen give the Lord a mighty shout of praise I have one, just one last scripture and then, and then we go. Luke chapter 19 verse 30. 
Just one scripture and then I'll be done. Remember, we are talking about the prophetic release. You have the prophetic release in your mouth. This is why you can't. I just feel sick today. Uh -huh, you just released it in your life. I don't know. This season, everybody's broke. I'm so broke. You just released it in your life. You will never hear me say that. You will never hear me say that. You will never hear me say that. I look at my account. I'm like, uh-uh. My eyes are lying to me. <laughs> Come on, women. That's what you need to say. You look in the mirror. You're like, ah, that mirror is lying to me. <laughs> the scale is lying. <laughs> Prophetic release. Thank you, Jesus. I just lost 20 pounds. <laughs> Go ye into the village over against you, in the which at your entering ye shall find a court tied. Therein ye never man sat. Loose him. And bring him hither. Jesus is giving a prophetic instruction to his disciples. Because he speaks from a place of authority. And when he released that word over them, that word went into the heart of the owner of the donkey. They could not resist because of who sent them. There are some of you today, God is releasing that word over your life. No matter whose name is on the deed of that house, God is releasing that house into your name. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. No matter what has been holding you back, God says as of today, a release has been caused in the spirit. Amen. Nothing will oppose, nothing will stop, says the spirit of the Lord. Stand with me. Let's go ahead and just declare over certain things, over our lives. Did we take our offering? No? No, not yet. Okay. The Lord has put a lot of empty jars in your heart. These are unfulfilled dreams and visions, unfulfilled ambitions and passions and desires. Some of you, from the time you were nine years old, you started craving for some things. But by the time you were 35, those things were so empty, dry bone that the devil began to tell you it's not going to happen. But I came to let you know that if the desire was planted in you by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit would never allow it to die dry. He will fill it in your life. Hold on with the offering, please. Hold on. We're going to do this afterwards. I, I, feel, I feel an unction in my spirit. That we ascend and go into that realm where we declare things that are not. Amen. As though they are. I do believe someone is getting their healing in this very moment. From, from an incurable disease. God is healing you right now. If all but you can declare I am completely healed. I'm going to be off medication. I'm never going to depend on a wheelchair. I'm never going to depend on crutches. I'm never going to depend on hearing aids or glasses to see. In the name of Jesus, I am commanding my bones to be revitalized by the power of the Holy Spirit. I am commanding my blood cells to be healed right about now in the mighty name of Jesus. I command my joints and my muscles and my skin to be healed in the name of Jesus. 
I'm commanding my finances to align itself with my vision and my passion and my dream and my ambition that I will not have an empty dream because I lack finances and resources in the name of Jesus. Can you imagine there are some people who refuse to get married because they have no money? So the lack of money is causing them to be lonely. I declare after today that's not your portion. My God, there's something God is doing in this house. I want you to check your heart. Because the scripture, 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 1, the woman was asked to borrow the vessels, the jars, from the neighbors, specifically empty jars. God says there's a lot of empty jars in your heart. And I want us to go in there and start observing them. And then we are going to speak over them and pour the oil from the flask in them until every one of them is full. So whatever we are going to be declaring full today is going to be full indeed. Do, do, you, do you receive that word? All right. How, mu how much time should we need? Five? Five minutes? Let's take five minutes. If you have to walk around, walk around. I, I want to see you releasing a prophetic declaration. You speak healing over your brain cells. You are not going to lose memory. What do they call that? Alzheimer's? Alzheimer's? You are not going to do that. In the name of Jesus. Are you ready? Move around. Declare over your empty jars. In the name of Jesus. Declare them, declare them. Declare yourself free. Declare open doors. Declare healing and restoration. Declare deliverance. Declare revival over your house. Revival over your siblings.
Prophetic declaration. Come on, declare favor over the city in your life. Come on, command the city to release the blessings to fill the empty jars. That the city you live in, come on, those of you that are watching, the city you live in will not reject you, will not despise you. Blessings on this city to be released. Deuteronomy 28 verse 3 Blessed shall thou be in the city Blessed shall thou be in the city Blessed shall you be in a city I want you to declare the blessings in the city of Dallas The blessings in Fort Worth The blessings in Allen In McKinney In Louisville In Mesquite The, mess, the blessings in Richardson The blessings in Denton the blessings in mercy wherever you stay command the blessing on that city to flow in your life command the city to release your blessing because yours is the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory forever Solomon chapter 4 verse 16. Song of Solomon chapter 4 verse 16. Song of Solomon chapter 4 
verse 16. This is for those of you that are looking for a spouse. For those of you that are saying, Lord, I'm tired of being by myself. The Lord says the solution is on your tongue. The answer to your future husband and your wife is on your tongue. Let's do the NLT. NLT. Song of Solomon chapter 4, verse 16. Those of you that are single, can we declare this over your life? As loud as you can go. Wait, 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 wait. You sound like you're not interested. Remember, we are declaring this is a prophetic action. If you are here believing God for marriage, you are believing God that God is going to send a godly husband, godly wife. It is up to you to release them where they are. It is up to you. Some of you, they are tied up in some ungodly relationships. They are tied up pursuing something else. But God is saying, release them. Are you ready? As loud as you can, go! That's it. You just commanded the north wind. If they are in the north, the north wind will blow them in your... The other version is called the North Spirit. There are four spirits. The other versions calls them the wind. The other versions calls them the spirit. There are four that governs. That is the north wind, the south wind, the east wind, and the west. You are commanding the blessings in the north to blow in your life. The blessings in the south. I declare wherever your career is tied up to be released in the name of Jesus. I declare whoever is occupying in your God-given house to be released over you by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Can we give the Lord a big hand of, of praise? Let's get our offerings. Get your offerings ready. And then I'm going to end the service by inviting those of you that are going to need prayer to come forward with your... If you are going to need prayer, come forward with your, your envelope. The ushers will meet you at the altar. But if you are going to be fine where you are, if you want to go, you can stay in your seats and then you can go. I want to encourage you... Um, it, guys, stand, stand there. Hold the mics. We, we're gonna hand this very, very with a bang. Um, on Wednesday, if you think tonight was off the chain, on Wednesday we are going to raise the roof off. Amen. So, so I want, I, I want to encourage you. Um, let's your offerings, your tithe, your first fruits, whatever it is that you are giving. I want to go ahead and bless it unto the Lord. Amen. Yeah, the, the Lord is declaring over you that you can never live in debt anymore. You will never live a life of poverty anymore. Many of you have been released from renting. Uh, I'm declaring 12 months. After 12 months, you are not renting anymore. <laughs> God said 14 months. Somebody is getting married. 14 months. In fact, I need a new suit. Where's Uncle Sam? Let's get us a new suit. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Are you ready for your offerings? Yes, I have one. Now, those of you that are going to be coming forward, if, if you need prayer, just walk forward with your envelope so that we can do this as fast as we can. And then we are going to go. If you have to go home, may the Lord bless you. We will be seeing you on, um, on Wednesday at 7 p.m. And we are going to continue building the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. If, if, you, if you need prayer, 
and you are going to be giving, if you are going to be giving, but you want to go home right where you are, you can just, you can stand and then you can go home. But those of you that are going to be coming forward for prayer, you can bring your envelope and then we will meet you at the, at the altar. Now remember that the cash app is the dollar sign I am GFC. The text to give the information is on your screen. Um, but are you ready for this? All right, let's all stand. Those of you that are coming forward with your envelope, because you're coming for prayer to just lay our hands on you and prophesy over you. Remember I told you we are going to be releasing prophetic words tonight. All right? So those of you that are going to, we are going to be doing this when the service is over. So some of you have to go, you can go. But if you are coming forward for prayer, step forward. If you are going home, may the Lord bless you. And remember, we'll see you on Wednesday. Now, those of you that are coming forward for prayer, bring your envelope up here. And then we are going to be praying for you. I declare... I declare by the Holy Spirit that as the word has been spoken, keep coming forward, you don't stop, keep coming forward. As the word has been spoken over your life, you will never lack anything good in your life in the name of Jesus. We are declaring by faith that your mouth will be filled with good things. According to Psalm 81 and verse 10. We are declaring today by the power of God that you will never run out of testimonies. But you will testify every day, every month, and every year to the goodness of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Marco, uh, uh, Marco. oh, thing. Man of God, let's let's bless God's people. We are going to speak prophetically into all these people that are up here. Kanda ka sedeke aramanda ka sa. Thank you, Jesus.
to worry cause he's working for me. He's working for me. He's working for me. Darkness 